are Sophos Naked Security and we are back on Facebook Live with our super cyber security specialist, Paul Duckin. Hooray! I, <laughs> I was going to cheer myself, but that's an alliteration I'll or an honest. assonance. What I is it? Was, super uh, cyber security specialist? Yes. I'm going to put that on my CV. You can do. Or was, resume for honest, our American uh, listeners. I was cheering myself because I managed to get that out because I did practice that before we went Did you? Yeah. <laughs> so, and it came out in one go. That's great. Well, I'm, I'm delighted to be called a super specialist. Um, let's crack on with our intriguing topic for the day. Okay, so today we're talking about HTTP versus HTTPS. Yes. So it's something that we often write about on Naked Security, the whole HTTP browser padlock thing. Um, and we get loads of comments kind of along the lines of who actually needs HTTPS? Why should I bother? How does this affect me? And so on. Yeah, sure. People think, well, either the browser should take care of it, or more importantly, people who run their own boutique websites, maybe hobby websites, often jump out going, I don't need HTTPS. Why do I need a padlock for my website? It costs me money. It takes loads of time. It's a hassle. Like Google and Facebook, it's easy for them to talk. They've got loads of money. And I haven't got anything secret on my site, so I don't care. And why should I? So you're right, it's very contentious whenever we talk about how browsers deal with HTTP versus HTTPS. It always brings a lot of alarm and fear and concern and confusion out of the woodwork, and this time's no different. So can you tell us what the latest story on this subject is about? Let me yes, let me get my trusty open source flavored Android phone out, and I will show you. Uh, here's the article that I'm referring to. Uh, this is something we published yesterday. Uh, we gave it maybe a slightly contentious headline, why your website is officially not secure from today. That was because yesterday, 24th of July 2018, a version of Google Chrome came out, and that's the most widely used browser on laptops and desktop computers these days. A version of Chrome came out that for the first time Instead of just saying, hey, a padlock site is secure and an unpadlock site is kind of blank, unknown, it's now more aggressively saying that a site that doesn't have HTTPS, it's not that it isn't, it says it actually is, the connection is not secure. So let me just, I'll just quickly show you what that looks like, jumping ahead slightly. So that's the kind of warning you get. Firefox, by the way, has something very, very similar. So when you click on the information tab on a site that doesn't use HTTPS, which are very few sites these days, because the other side of this story is that if you don't have a padlock on your site, Google marks you down in search rankings. It's like you're not playing the game strongly enough. Um, so now if you, don't have a, if you have a website that doesn't have a security certificate, the padlock, then actually you're going to be, get marked down in search and in the world's most popular browser, you'll kind of get marked down visually as well because it's not just that you're kind of neutral, you're now actively labeled as connection insecure, be careful. So uh, Belinda thinks your shirt is awesome. I do too, Belinda. If you would like one, you can buy one of your very own. Just go to shop.sophos.com. We've got the shirts and very cool socks, laptop stickers, and even amongst all of that stuff, some high-end bicycles with Sophos brand on, but maybe you don't want those. But yeah, the shirts are available. I love them, and whenever I wear them out, people go, I love your shirt. So maybe I should stop wearing them. People say, hey, I like you, but I'm happy to be loved for my shirt. Some people are here for your shirt. Though. That's, Sorry. I'm not going to take it off, I'll tell you that. Um, uh, Kasten has said, people still talk about old caching systems, which has to go with this. Caching systems? Uh, if you're still there, if you can just be a bit clearer about what you mean by that, do you mean that if you've already updated that you might still look bad in old Google pages? Um, I guess the thing is that when someone visits your site and make an, makes an active connection to it, that's when the browser gets to figure out whether you're using encryption or not, and that's what really matters. So when the search engines are visiting your site these days, no matter what they were like before, it's not too late to make the change. So I don't, don't worry about what's happened in the past. If it was wrong then, it's certainly wrong now. Um, uh, the idea is that as far as HTTPS goes, you've got to get with the game. Okay, so can we just take it back to basics a bit? quickly. Um, can you just explain the difference between HTTP and HTTPS? Yes, actually, maybe we should have started there because the, the devil is in the details. 
HTTP is short for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Now, hypertext is generally what the web's all about. Hypertext is the idea that you can have an article with links, and when you click the link, you go somewhere else. But in fact, HTTP, it's used as a method between clients and servers, typically a web a browser and a web server, of exchanging data. So the key thing about HTTPS is the T for transport. It's a transport protocol which deals with shoveling data between your computer and a server. And the problem is that in the early days of HTTP and the web, all of that stuff that you typed in and sent and that the, that the server sent back in return was not encrypted. So A, anyone could read it along the way, and B, even worse perhaps, they could modify and fiddle with it, like they could change downloads to be malware, they could change your bank balance to look different, they could put in fake news, and you would be none the wiser. And that's why HTTPS was introduced. The S is just short for secure, so it means hypertext transfer protocol, the secure version, and it deals with how the data is moved between you and the server. It doesn't deal with the sanity, the sanctity, the safety, the security of the data on the server itself. It's about the transport part, the connection. That's the important thing to remember. Because not only is HTTP used for things other than web traffic these days, it also doesn't actually deal with the security of the server itself, merely of the connection to it. Okay, so if HTTPS is secure HTTP. Yeah. Does that mean, uh, well, you've spoken a little bit about it, but does that mean an HTTPS website is secure? Does, it, does the padlock mean? Yeah, that, that's the burning question that everyone wants to know. As I said, the, 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 the second T in HTTP is about the transport. So that's how the data moves around. So the pad, not seeing the padlock on a website means that what you're seeing really can't be trusted because anywhere between the server, as the, as the packets were floating through the network, anybody could have sniffed them out, seen what you were talking about, and modified the content. You have no chance of detecting that. So I agree that a site that doesn't have HTTPS can be considered insecure because you can't trust the data once it's left the server. The flip side, unfortunately, is that a site that does have a padlock, it's only the connection to the site that is secure. So a good analogy is, I would recommend that you use full disk encryption on your laptop. So if you've got a Mac, turn on FileVault. If you've got Windows and it comes with BitLocker, use it because it means you need a password to get at the data on your hard disk. However, the fact that you've encrypted your hard disk does not mean that you can guarantee that all the stuff on your hard disk is virus free. They're two related but separate problems. You can have an encrypted connection to a web server, but the server itself could still be full of garbage. It could be full of incorrect information. It could be full of malware. It could be full of coin mining JavaScript and all sorts of stuff. That's the problem. So the padlock tells you that nothing will be changed to and from the site. It doesn't vouch it says a good thing about the site, that the person obviously cares somewhat about security, or their provider does. It doesn't vouch for the actual web server and its content at all. Richard says, I think we're close to the point where non-secure sites won't work at all anyway. Well, that's what some people are predicting, and it, I think it's where the, the Chromes and the Firefoxes and browsers like Microsoft Edge are taking us. They're becoming less and less tolerant, if you like, or they're, they're presenting a more and more dismal message about HTTP. And the problem with HTTP-only websites, ones that don't use these security certificates to encrypt the content, although certificates can be Forged, they can be stolen, you can get fake ones, you can get free ones, for, for example, from an organization called Let's Encrypt. The problem is if you're visiting a site that uses only HTTP, anything could have happened to the data once it's left the site. And typically it makes quite a long and circuitous route around the internet. It may come into a Wi-Fi router in your coffee shop and then go into your computer. And anyone along the way could have messed with it. 
For example, there's a, it's a research project supposedly, but a free open source tool out there called Coffee Miner. The idea is you put it on your laptop, you go into a coffee shop, and anyone who's browsing in that coffee shop on the same network as you, every time they visit an HTTP only website, they get cryptocurrency brown mining JavaScript shoved into every single website they visit. That can't happen with HTTPS because if you mess with the content of the site, it won't load because the encryption technology makes the modification obvious. So I agree, I think we'll get to an era, probably not too far away, where basically if you've got an HTTP website, don't bother coming, no one's going to go there. Browsers are going to pop up warnings and try and prevent you going there. And people are just going to start refusing to use them because why would you trust something which is so easy to tamper with on the way? So going back to our most recent article on this topic, yep. um, why does Google Chrome feature so prominently in it? Well, I think firstly, as we mentioned before, Chrome is currently the most popular desktop browser. So if you've got a laptop, uh, I mean, I, I'm a Firefox fan, so I use Firefox. I do have Chrome on my laptop, and it keeps itself up to date, as does Firefox, because for some things that I do, they may require Chrome, or they require a Chrome-specific plugin. So even though I'm not a Chrome fan, I've still got it. Loads of people use it as their preferred browser, and Google has been taking the lead in saying, we're going to change our messaging about HTTPS. We're going to start making it obvious that we think that anybody who doesn't have an encryption certificate to encrypt their web traffic, we think they're kind of letting the side down. So that's why Google have got both praise and criticism for this. Praise from people who go, we should do this, we should move to an HTTPS only world, and criticism from people who say, I can't afford a web certificate, even though they're free these days, it's a hassle for my website, I've just got a vintage car club, I don't care about encryption, it's not necessary, there's no secrets on there. Well, it's not difficult to be a little bit more secure, and you should care, because you should care that when people visit your site, they are seeing what you intended and not what some crook put there in your place. It makes you look bad, it puts your visitors at risk, and it's easy enough to avoid. So that's why Google's big on this, but this is sort of affects all browsers, and all browsers are kind of going in that same direction. That if you have an HTTP connection, they're going to start making a fuss about that, rather than praising websites for having encryption in the first place. That's going to be the given, and HTTP hopefully will become the very, very rare exception. So what can we do about HTTP versus HTTPS? You mean get, we should get some placards and march down the streets? It's not that serious. I guess if you have a web server, even if it's a boutique web server run by a hosting company, and you've never bothered about HTTPS, about getting a web security certificate and using it, cross that bridge now. You used to have to pay money and you have to renew the certificates every year and pay someone money, even if it was only $10. That was obviously a cost and a hassle. It's much, much easier these days with free tools that can help you do this automatically. It doesn't make the world automatically a safer place. Just encrypting something doesn't stop crooks getting hold of it. After all, if they get hold of the password, they can decrypt it themselves. But it's a bridge you should cross if you run a website. And if you're a user, heed those warnings that your browser's starting to give you. When the browser's saying that uh, an HTTP-only website when it's actively saying this site is insecure, treat it that way, because no matter how much the owner of the website cares for the content of the website, if it's not using HTTPS, the moment it leaves their server, they have pretty much no control over it. It can get tweaked along the way. So what you can do is adopt HTTPS if you are one of those holdout web server operators who won't, doesn't want to do it. Cross the bridge, it's not as difficult as you think. And if you're a user, look for that padlock, not because it automatically makes you secure, but by not seeing it, what it says is, I'm visiting a website that doesn't really care whether I see the truth or not. Thank you, Duck, for your super cyber security specialist. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered if you might have a second go at that <laughs> and whether you'd do it all in one. I, I managed to do it. I don't know how, but I, I managed. Um, and thank you all for your comments and questions. Keep them coming in the box below for Duck and the rest of the Naked Security team. Well, Robert says, good advice given. Many thanks for sharing this. You're very welcome. It's a great pleasure, and thanks for tuning in. We do appreciate it so much. Yes, and until next time, everyone, stay secure. And go to shop.sophos.com if you want the shirt. <laughs> <laughs>